Heidi Ho, Colony Peep, Suzanne from Flat Wearable Artisan Jewelry. I'm going to show you a tool that I recently discovered. Well, it's it's probably been a few months since I discovered this tool. Um, it's really invaluable for getting a perfect edge. So uh, those of you that are making the soldered silverware hearts, um, play, pay close attention because this really is something that's going to help you tremendously. So I'm going to do a soldered heart out of these two pieces of silverware here. Um, the tool that we're going to be using is called a miter vise. It's a very small little tool here and it will allow you to create both 90 degree and 45 degree angles depending on which part you slide your pieces through and you're going to slide the piece up in there you're going to tighten these down and then you're going to file and once you've hit the top of the miter vise and there's no more material to remove you've created a perfect edge the one little drawback is your the piece that you're using cannot be any longer than approximately one and an eighth inch or approximately 27 millimeters. So when you do your hearts, you need to measure um, and make sure you're not going over that amount. For most hearts, um, you probably will be all right. If you want to make a heart that's very elongated, you're probably going to run into problems there. And then you're just going to have to file and do the best you can because you're not going to be able to fit it into the miter vise. So um, this here is 27 millimeters. And where I have drawn my line and the length of 27 millimeters, I'm well within range to be able to fit it into the miter vise. So I'm going to cut these pieces off with my mini bandsaw. You can cut them off with a Dremel cutoff wheel, um, jeweler's saw, whatever works um, easiest for you. Then I'm going to come back and show you how to do the filing on the miter vise. Okay, so I've got my pieces cut off now and that is going to be the heart. It is best not to cut directly on the line, but to leave yourself a little bit of uh, material just past the line. And you'll see why when it comes through the miter vise here. So to open this up, you just unscrew these a little bit. Never take those off entirely because you don't want this whole thing to fall apart. Um, this is made with steel, so you do not want to use an expensive file on this uh, because it will damage your file. So don't use an expensive file. So you're going to insert the piece. Try and do this at the same time that I'm trying to video it, and that tends to be a little tricky. But I want to get the piece in there up to my black line. I'll show you here in a second. Let me get it adjusted in there first. I want to go up to my black Sharpie marker line and then I'm going to tighten down the screws. And this little this little notch here, that's your stop area. So you want your piece um, no longer than you know the stop area and then this little post in here you can see why it's not going to why if you have an elongated piece it wouldn't fit because you have just so much area to work with I would love to see my devices made a little bit longer but uh, so far I have not so I'm going to screw that down you can see the line, the little black Sharpie line there. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to file down to that line. And what it's going to do is make it even and flush with the miter vise. This is just really an inexpensive uh, file, probably a Harbor Freight deal. Um, I have some expensive good files and you would never want to use a good expensive file for this purpose because this, like I said, this tool steel 
um, against your file is going to damage it. So you're just going to keep filing down. This is a pretty coarse file, so it usually doesn't take it too long. If you cut your piece relatively Trying to get this where you guys can see what I'm doing. Try to get this piece relatively straight to start with, and you'll have a lot less filing to do. You can see on the face of the miter vise how scratched up it is because I've used it quite a bit to make those perfect edges. You'll find, um, if you ever get into additional jewelry making, that uh, needing a perfect edge is essential in a lot of areas uh, in silversmithing. Uh, bezels, for example, when you make bezels, you really have to have a perfect edge. Let's see if I can do this better by holding it up here so you can see it. There are actually holes in it, and you can put a couple of pins in your work surface, and you can set that down, and it will hold it for you. You can set it down so your, your little nails, your nails come up through those holes, and that will hold it in place. So you can do it that way as well. Or you can put this in a vise, you know, I'm kind of at a disadvantage here trying to show you this at the same time that I'm doing it. So I'm just going to keep filing away until I have gotten a flush surface. You can see I'm getting down there. Not quite there yet. If you can, if your fingernail catches on it, you have not gotten down far enough yet. Good soldering requires perfect connections. Really, really important. Solder does not effectively fill gaps. And I know some of you may say, yeah, but I can get solder to fill in gaps. Well, with the low temp solder, the low melt temp solder, you can gunk up a lot of solder on there to fill in a gap but what it leaves you with is really not a very nice looking uh, finished product and if you get into doing any type of silver smithing work where you're using um, hard solder you're going to find that that really doesn't work that does not hold true really just can't go up solder with hard jeweler solder like you can with the low melt temp solder. So I just find it's really important in my work to not see solder seams. I think it really detracts from the look of the piece. Files only cut in one direction, but you can go back and forth if you choose. Getting there. On one edge, I can just about, just about pass my fingernail over it, but it's a little high in the middle, so I'm just going to keep working at it. that the, you know, my camera is at a little bit of a disadvantage angle guys, but you get the idea of what's going on here. Just about there. My 
fingernail is not catching there, but it's still just a little hair right there. All right, I'm going to take that piece out. I've got that flat now. My fingernail does not catch on that. runs right across. And I'm going to do the other one, then I'll come back and show you how really nice of a seam that that's going to make. I'm uh, working on the second one here. You can also tell by the look of the metal, by the coloring and the texture of the metal, whether you have that flat and flush. And you can see how the color changes. It's shiny here and it's shiny here and it's kind of dull there. And that's the saw marks there. So it's a little bit of a divot there. So I'm filing here and here, but I'm not reaching that area just yet. So you know that you have a nice, flush, smooth edge when the color and the texture matches completely. So I'm going to finish up filing this one. I'll show you how it all gets put together. Okay, so I finished the filing on the second piece. You can see how the color, the texture on this metal here is completely uniform. I cannot catch my finger across it. It's completely flush with the miter vise. This miter vise is a really cool little tool. It's not a cheap tool. I mean, it looks like it's would would be really inexpensive, but unfortunately, it's not a really cheap tool but I have found it to be completely invaluable. So you can see now without me even doing any soldering what a beautiful flush connection I'm getting here. Turn it around and show you the back. I got a little bit of Sharpie marker on there. Let me get that Sharpie marker off. That's gonna interfere with how it looks. When I show it to you, get these put together. And if you have measured and done all this correctly, let's see if I can focus that a little bit better for you. It's going to make a perfect seam. If you didn't cut them properly and you find that you know one piece sticks out a little more on the bottom than the other piece does, that's just a matter of uh, sanding it and, and filing it and making that edge smooth and rounded at the end after you're done soldering. So if you've got one a little bit longer than the other, it's not a problem. All right, I'm going to get the soldering done on this. If you find you've got a little bit of a burr on the edge, just use a little bit of sandpaper. This is some, I think, 220 grit sandpaper. Just to get that burr off of there. It's a lot easier to get that burr off there now than it is after it's been soldered. I don't really want to do too much on that area because you you know you've done all your filing there so that should be really really nice and if you spend too much time trying to fine tune that you may interfere with the perfect edge that you just made so you want those pieces to be nice and you want the edges to be nice and smooth both on the inside and the outside excuse me the front and the back so then we're going to solder these Okay, before I solder, I want to show you the seam in the setup here. Hopefully that focuses in enough. So I've got it on my honeycomb board and I've got T-pins to hold it in place. And the T-pins to hold it in place are pretty important because you don't want the pieces to migrate away from each other and they will do that. So let me get uh, set up for the soldering here. 
Okay, I'm all set up here with soldering. I'm going to use the low melt temp solder for this. It's a silver plated item and it is not um, a join that is under stress. So the low melt temp solder is really nice for that. Um, flux is not necessary. I did put a little bit of mighty flux on here just because the surface here is a little rounded and my solder chips just wanted to roll away. So to prevent that from happening, I put a little bit of Mighty Flux on there, kind of, you know, act as a glue, so to speak. And make sure my pieces are lined up properly. And we're gonna warm the whole piece up. I'm doing this on the back side. You can do it on the front side. The drawback to that is sometimes if you didn't get a good soldering, uh, you're going to end up with, you know, solder slop across the front side. So I tend to solder on the back. A little easier, I think, to clean up. So this temp, uh, this uh, low melt temp solder melts pretty quick. If something moves, you want to make sure you have your solder pick handy to push it into place. And my solder has flowed, but what I'm trying to do right now is just to make sure everything is perfectly lined up. One of the benefits of the low melt temp solder is it stays uh, wet longer than jeweler's hard solder does. So if you make mistakes, you can go back in and move the pieces around. You don't really have that benefit uh, the jeweler's solder. You need a little more solder down here. So I'm just gonna add a dab more. And I've got a little bit of a solder mess, but we'll clean that up afterwards. All right, so do not move this piece, especially with the low melt temp solder. You don't wanna move the piece. Um, you wanna let that cool down so you don't break your solder seam. I'm going to let that cool down. I'll quench it and we'll be back. Okay, I have um, cleaned and polished and gotten this all finished after the soldering. And this is the heart that we have right here. You can see it's got a beautiful seam, just about seamless, not perfect, but pretty darn close. That is the back. I did have a little bit of solder slop, um, which I was able to clean most of that up with some polishing bits that I'm going to show you. And if you wanted to hang this, I would recommend if you're going to do a hold, do it before you do the soldering. Um, I find that easier. This is just a demo, so I didn't um, create any way to hang it. So um, these polishing bits, I absolutely love them. It is called a universal silicone polishing kit and the um, manufacturer is Dedeco. I buy these from Rio Grande. Um, you can buy individuals but I have a kit and what you have is three different shapes and there's white, black, blue, and pink. So we've got the most aggressive and abrasive is white followed by black. Uh, your polishing wheels are your blue and your red. So using this, this uh, using white um, I was able to remove some of that solder slop. You do have to be careful because these are abrasive and they can go through the silver plating depending on um, you know the quality of the silverware and how thick the silver plating is. Uh, if you're a little bit concerned that you're going to go through the silver plating, you might want to start with the black there um, and then finish your polishing, which is going to bring up your shine with the blue or the red. I very frequently use a little brass brush on my Dremel and uh, do my finishing with a brass brush. We also on our website carry a brass brush, brass handle brush. I use the brass brush a lot. I love it, absolutely love it. So anyhow, this little kit here um, comes with all these different uh, wheels and it comes with the little mandrels. I don't have them uh, handy right now, but it comes with a, a different, couple different sizes of mandrels that you're going to mount these onto. They're going to fit in uh, your flex shaft, your Dremel, your Fordham, uh, whatever tool that you have to use there. Um, the mandrel size 
is a 332nd shape. So you want to make sure your particular uh, flex shaft tool will uh, accommodate a 332nd shank. There are different size shanks. So if you have any questions about this, be sure to ask and I will be happy to answer them. And we'll talk to you again very soon. Bye-bye.